lately I've been getting a lot of inquiries about the Gabrielle bag and oh my goodness a lot of feedback about the 22 bag well because I have experience with both of these bags I will be sharing with you an update and just kind of discussion around these two bags will help you decide whether you should choose one versus another and also this whole rumor about the Gabrielle bag being discontinued or phased out. Hey guys, my name is Amy if you're new to my channel and let's get right into Gabrielle bag. I have two of those. I got the black one first rather early. I think I got it during the second season that this bag launched. And then uh, this one, I got it in 2019. It was a seasonal, really beautiful burgundy color. As you can see, this one is still very, very new. In fact, it looks pretty much brand new, um, not much creases uh, at all on the bag and very puffy and um, we're very well kept, of course. I love these Samorga little chain holders. All in all, it shows that I love the Gabrielle bag enough to buy two. And I will just talk about the black one most of the time because not only is this my oldest one, I've used this much, much more than the burgundy one. And of course, I have more wear and tear on this one. So the whole rumor around the Gabrielle being discontinued, personally, I can't confirm that. But I do find that curious because as of the current collection, the 22B collection that is about to launch, Fall Winter Act 1, there is a Gabrielle bag available. And I know that for a fact because that's what we will be having in our store in Vancouver. It is actually available for sale. Although it is only showing the smallest size and only the black color. I almost wonder if maybe the Gabrielle is you know, maybe they're slowing down production for sure, and maybe they they are discontinuing certain sizes. I do know that the mini size or the smallest size is the most popular because it's my favorite size. And also I think um, having tried on the larger size and just having seen the resale market, just go on Fashion File, you'll see that the larger sizes, doesn't matter if it's the large, medium or new medium, they tend to not resell very well, whereas the small size resells the best. Of course, with Chanel, they have permanent styles and the Gabrielle has been a permanent style since its debut. Um, I'm guessing if they decide to maybe not produce the Gabrielle as much, maybe it will become a seasonal bag more than a permanent bag. Therefore, I don't know if it's completely gone because as I said, it's available in 22B. If you want to buy it, it's available in black and small. And I know we're getting it in Vancouver. The Gabrielle bag and the 22 bag are very similar prices. The small and the small 22 are pretty much the same price. Anyway, if you have more information about the Gabrielle status, whether it's really being discontinued or they're still making it, but just not so much and only in certain size and colors maybe, let us know down below in the comments. I will say that from a construction's point of view, having used the bag longer, having had uh, travel with it, I am more confident in the Gabrielle in that sense. My bag is four and a half years old already, so it's held up really, really well. And I personally, I personally can't even share any wear and tear except the fact that the leather has creased here and it is a distressed leather to begin with, especially because sometimes I have less things, sometimes I have more things. When I was traveling, I was, you know, I had more things in my bag. And so when you sort of do this, like you stuff your bag more, it kind of puffs up more. The thing is with the Gabriella, there's still so much structure that it's not really going to sag all the way down. Like this part here on top, is still really solid and it, it's not it's not really going to puddle all the way down. Plus, you have to be reasonable with wear and tear. Bags are meant to be used. Things are meant to be enjoyed. And so, yes, you can be careful. That's how I am in general. But it doesn't mean that I'm not going to baby it to the point where I can't enjoy my items. So I, I'm still careful. I'm not going to knock around the walls and everything because this part here is scratchable, right? It's it's a very solid base. Um, but yeah, I'm just showing you mine. It literally is still pristine, right? I, I mean, it's probably nicer than the floor model 
from Chanel, <laughs> if you ask me. Like if Chanel had a floor model of the Gabrielle sitting around, which I don't think they normally have, they usually sell out pretty quickly. Um, it's really good and also no issues with any of the glazing. I know um, glazing can be a concern with some people. I never even thought of it actually. I guess I've never had issues with Chanel glazing because they don't do a ton of it so I never even thought about it. Even the top of the bag uh, as you can see it's holding up super well. There is a bit of dust accumulating just around the edges here but that's totally normal. I am inspecting the whole thing and I honestly don't see any wear and tear. Um, I am aware however I have had subscribers that are from a very humid country. They live in Singapore and it's very humid there and also they've been really enjoying their <laughs> Gabrielle bag. They even wear it in the rain and they don't bring an umbrella, that sort of thing. And they have experienced some wear and tear on the straps where the leather parts on the straps are kind of, I guess, breaking or peeling off. That's the only wear and tear that I was aware of that can happen. Um, you guys know me, I do live in Vancouver. It rains a lot here, but I do dress for the occasion. If it's quite rainy, I will avoid leather bags in general because it's not just Chanel. Any leather, you should not be soaking it in, in rain to begin with. So I do dress for the occasion. And if I am caught in a rain, it's usually a scenario where I just you know, go from the store to my car. So it's a very short distance. This is my second most sort of traveled bag and also one of my most used bags in my collection overall. Um, in the beginning of me owning this bag, it was my honeymoon phase. I definitely used it a ton more. Now I get to rotate between all my bags. And so it doesn't get as much use, but regardless, having owned it for this long of a time and having had experience with it, I would still totally recommend the Gabrielle, especially in this size. Let's go through some of the pros and cons real quick. Pros is that this bag has been really durable, really easy to pair with any outfit. Although it looks very edgy, it actually looks amazing with kind of like uh, bigger jackets, blazer looks, and once in a while, I will also wear it with a dress. It just depends on the look. It can sort of add an edge to a very feminine look. So it just really depends on how you accessorize as well. So I would say that this bag is rather versatile in terms of styling. Um, it also is so well constructed. I would say quality wise, wear and tear wise, I have had no issues whatsoever. I'm also really glad that I got it D at the beginning when the price was not as high. Obviously that is a con right now. Anyway, in terms of pros also uh, is the size. I feel like being the mini size of the Gabrielle bag or the small size, I should say, um, it's such a good size. This is still small enough that you feel like you're carrying a mini bag, but it fits so much. It's such a generous um, size bag. It's easy to reach in and out. This is a smooth one swipe zipper, which you guys know I don't like zippers, but this is such an easy zipper to get in and out of, which I don't have any issues with. So I love the zipper actually. I love the opening that is flexible on top, but I also appreciate the very solid base because you know what? I love to carry my hand sanitizers. And even back then, even when we didn't have hand sanitizer, I just love the fact that everything lines up straight. As long as everything is sort of more vertical, you get a, you get a bird's eye view from the top and you reach for whatever you need so easily. This is a tall bottle of sanitizer. It just slips right in. Everything stacks up so well when you have all the space kind of filled out and you open it, you can reach for the stuff that you need. It's so easy. It's such a great bag. It also has a few pockets inside. The compartments are amazing. There's a zippered compartment, which I only seldomly use, only if I need to maybe hide a ring inside. The bigger pocket here, the side pocket, I love. I love because that's where you can put something that you want to access easily. So your car key maybe, sometimes you have a parking stub or just maybe one card that you use often. This is such a great space. Um, uh, the lipstick the lipstick compartment I don't really use, but um, it's there if you want to use it. 
and it also has this if you ever use it i never use it um but it's there there is also several ways to carry this bag although i don't know if that's necessarily a pro because i don't really carry it other than uh, this way which is the most normal hobo way but i know it can be fun and sometimes i do sort of try the zigzag or the triangle way um so yeah as far as pros i think this bag is super versatile and it's such a unique style it's also a carl's design um and so i feel like this is a great style to collect especially if you are a chanel lover it is a, a great style to have at least in your rotation um, it, but not only that it is a very practical bag for its size now the cons uh currently the price is very high it is basically the same price as the new chanel 22 bag which of course we've had many many iterations of price increases so i guess that is a con um, also in terms of resale value if that is something that you worry about it's not the bag that is the most loved by the general public it's nothing like the classic flap status of course so resale value will vary quite a bit if you have one that is in pristine condition and it's the small size and it's a color that everyone wants to get usually the black uh, then it's probably going to do a bit better than say a white color that is had color transfer and all that stuff uh, oh yes by the way color transfer will and can happen when you get the light color versions because this is a shoulder bag or crossbody if you really want it but it's mainly a shoulder bag so it does rub right here right right on your sort of um, abdomen and hip area and so depending on what you're wearing especially with winter jackets where the wool the dark color wool it will transfer onto your bag so just be very very careful if you choose a light color because you have to be mindful of your outfits in that case um in terms of wear and tear although i don't find it to be terrible it can still be terrible because i know not everyone is super careful with their things and so if you're kind of rough with your bags you can get a ton of like scuffs uh, or maybe like whole, whole scratches and whole chunks uh, coming off of the base of the leather because this is you know this is this is a solid base but things that are hard will you know if if you have a real impact if you dropped it really really badly on a bad angle on a concrete or whatnot it, it will it will peel off a chunk of the leather right so that is totally possible um the larger sizes especially will do uh very badly here it will get a lot more creasing and kind of just look very worn down it will maybe even sag more because the large size doesn't um even though it does have structure in general it's just gravity right anything heavier will kind of make that happen it is also a fairly heavy bag for its size it's actually 705 grams which is yeah, it's like almost one and a half pounds, right? So um, it does have a bit of weight and the weight does come from, I think, all the hardware. So all the chains and also the solid base. So if you're very, very sensitive with weight, I will say um, it, it is a heavier mini bag. Mind you, this whole strap situation, especially with this part and also just having more more to the strap does alleviate some of that weight uh, it distributes it well onto your shoulder so i've never really found that to be a huge problem per se unless you were wearing this bag the whole day say when you're traveling right you're wearing this bag the whole day and you have a lot of things inside like your camera your rechargeable battery you know very heavy um small things that are bulky uh, it can weigh it down so Weight can be an issue for some of you. Another con is that these chains are not everyone's taste. I know that uh, some people are very maybe OCD about it getting all tangled or maybe if you do wear a lot of um, clothing that has a ton of hardware, a lot of buttons or zippers, or maybe you like a ton of accessories with brooches and necklaces, it can get tangled and I've heard stories of um i think one of my subscribers shared with me that he was wearing like uh, a lot of these beautiful uh, stacked necklaces i think that was the, the scenario uh, and it got all tangled and it damaged it so that is something to 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 be aware of you know it is a lot of hardware so i tend to wear this bag with simpler outfits um it goes well really well with t-shirts and 
a, a few buttons here is okay. I tend to let the bag shine more as the accessory rather than putting a ton of other accessories. So all in all, do I recommend this bag? 100% yes, I think this bag should stay in the rotation from Chanel. I don't care if they are just slowing down. Uh, I hope they're not really completely discontinuing this style because I honestly love it. And I feel like the, for those who haven't had the chance to get it yet, it should still be available so that you guys can still get it. And plus, I, I feel like this is such a great design. There's so much going on um, in terms of construction is so hard to make this bag can you imagine how hard it is to make all these things smooth all these like placing of the leather onto the base and just like sewing around uh there's just a lot going on and uh, it's just so perfect and and there's so much hardware and little details that really makes the bag actually and it can be sort of a underrated bag as well because a lot of times when you don't see the cc logo because this actually tends to just sit on top that's how it tends to like to behave when you're wearing the bag you really can't tell that it's a chanel bag unless you know it i would just put a link to the playlist of all my gabrielle videos uh they are all very informative i go through a lot of things pros and cons at the time first impressions mod shots there's a ton to go through if you're really researching this bag. Just for eye candy, I will show how my beautiful burgundy is looking. It's looking fantastic and it's just being its gorgeous self. Um, but I do favor the black one just because, I don't know, it's just easy. It just goes with all my outfits automatically. So this one is sort of that precious one that I have in my collection that is uh, so gorgeous. The color is so rich and beautiful. And also this leather, I don't know if you're noticing, it seems tougher like it's it seems like a tougher um more um um thicker calf skin than my black one i've noticed that right off the bat when i bought this obviously the leathers vary from season to season so maybe that particular season they had a thicker batch of calf skin it's just fantastic how beautiful is it and yes, I love this to store the chains. And also, uh, those of you who are wondering, this is not a sponsored post, but those of you who are wondering, do you really need an organizer for this bag? I would say no, but I love having it just so that I can keep the structure of the bag, especially if you're really concerned about the bag sagging over time, just to have it for storage, especially if you have the larger size. I would say if you have the size, I wouldn't worry too much about it during the first year but if this is your daily bag and if you are concerned about it sagging and you know gravity doing its thing then i would suggest getting an organizer just to have it stored inside that will really help in the long run i always love my samorga organizer this is the two millimeter felt and yeah if you're interested i will link it down below you can use my coupon code if you want it's not affiliated but you can also save 20 percent. all right let's talk about the 22 bag shall we it is a very um, turbulent week for me <laughs> in terms of the 22 bag feedback that I got. As you all know, I revealed the 22 bag on the week of my birthday on my channel. However, I've had the bag since June. The 22 bag is one of the most exciting new bags that I have experienced so far. And I love it. I really, really enjoy using it. And the thing is, the style suits me you would think that no it's so sort of like different from all the classics and the structured bags and especially if you follow me you know my collection they're all mini bags essentially but i think that's what's refreshing about the 22 bag because it's so different and it's the only chanel bag that is kind of the larger size but still very very practical and light it's a bag that i couldn't wait to use i think of all my uh, purchases from Chanel, I've always kind of had this honeymoon phase where I just kind of like appreciate the product, but I'm not really using it. Like I just kind of let it sit there and, and just look at it or kind of try it on at home and I might talk about it and reveal it. But the 22 bag is one of the only bags that I could not wait to literally unbox and start using. And although I'm not using it every single day, it's just a bag that I couldn't wait to use. Now, 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 now. The drama? Can I call it that? I think there's a bit of drama and, and um, 
um, situation uh, going on with this bag and I was definitely made fully aware of it after I revealed mine on my birthday. As I said before, I, <laughs> I've owned this bag for a while. I also shared it in my 22A collection review, the Metier Da collection. I mentioned in the video that I had bought something and that was the bag that I bought. I had bought something, but I was gonna only reveal it for my birthday because it was a birthday to myself for July. So um, I've had the bag for a little while and my goodness, all the news and, and feedback that came out later um, actually was a bit overwhelming. As you can see, I actually don't have the 22 bag with me right now. And that is the update part that I'm providing. Um, I brought it back to Chanel because after all of you were bombarding me, go watch Jacob or Romina's video. And also I think the real Shaquin has made a video about it too. I was like, oh my goodness, what is happening? Of course, I had to go watch all of these videos. And also, in the meantime, I also checked out Purse Forum. Throughout my research, I noticed that uh, not everyone was having issues. And that is very interesting, especially if you go on Purse Forum. I have read the whole thread. <laughs> I will show the thread down below, actually, if you are interested. Um, there's actually a lot of people that own the 22 bag. And I'm not sure which ones they own. Actually, some of them own the metallic ones, some of them just own the regular colors, whether it was the first or second season. Um, I think there's just, in general, a pool of people that don't have any issues, that are really using their bags and really enjoying it, and they do put the same amount of stuff that I do. In fact, some of them put more things in it, and they are not experiencing any issues. So I'm not so sure why, like I can't really explain, obviously I don't know, and I can't really comprehend what would make certain bags more prone and others not. Is it really the material or is it the environment? After gathering all that information, I went and checked my bag as well to see if my bag had any wear and tear that was probably a bit premature and unfortunately I also got a little bit. I should say that I've never scrunched the bag. Uh, my essay did scrunch the bag for me to try on actually. He scrunched the bag the very first time I tried on the bag just to have an idea of how it looked like but I personally never scrunched the bag when I use it. I actually prefer it more kind of square hence the reason why I got a Samorga for it. I feel like it's probably the coating that has been rubbed off. I also don't know exactly when it happened. Obviously, having had the bag since June the 9th, I have worn it a few times and I will insert all the mod shots of me wearing my bag. This was when it was still a bit cold in uh, June and I wore it for the very first time. I went to my brother's house. I also had my organizer in it. And what did I bring that day? Just my usual stuff, like all my, all the stuff that I usually put in my bags, just, um, this, my keys, the hand sanitizer, definitely not overstuffed. It was definitely just my regular things. So I went to his house and then we also went back out later on that evening and we went to the local museum. I would say very light wear. The next time I wore it, I went to the beach. All I had in there was also my usual stuff, but I also had my Chanel jacket folded up in my bag. That's why it's a little bit more puffy in that instance, but still very light wear, I would say. And then we went for dinner and I had the bag on my lap while I was eating. In here, it was getting a bit warmer now. I wore it to, again, my brother's house. All I brought was the regular stuff as well as a little outfit for the kids. I bought my nephew a little pair of cotton shorts as well as uh, a little dress, a 10 month old dress for my knees. So those were in the bag and that was it. Uh, so again, not too overstuffed. It does accommodate it and not too heavy. And I also tried wearing it with the one chain just for the picture. Last but not least, I wore it on this day right before a live stream. I went for a nice meal at a local Vietnamese dinner and one of my subscribers actually recognized me, so that was very, very nice. Again, very light wear in all of these occasions. And there was one other occasion where I wore it and I went to do some errands. I went to buy my uh, cosmetics and supplements and I had put those things in my bag. So yes, I never overloaded my bag and it never got heavy enough for me to complain. And even when I had, say, my cosmetics, 
and supplements in my bag. I was literally walking from the store to my car, so it was maybe 30 feet of walking. So I probably wore it five, six times in total, and it was very me being careful with my bags of course it was a brand new bag but i really enjoyed it i love this bag don't get me wrong um this is not me trying to persuade you in any way i'm just letting you know the update on my bag and since a lot of you asked me to check as well and unfortunately in my case i observe the wear and tear i think bags or things are meant to be used and that they should have wear and tear over time I was just very very surprised that in my case and again I don't I didn't know when it happened because I only found out all this news and all this feedback it was only then that I checked my bag so I actually don't really know exactly when it happened did it happen on the first wear did it happen on the second wear I have no idea but regardless I did think that it was a bit strange and so I shared it with my essay my essay couldn't respond back to me right away he just said that I'll take a look when he gets back. I think my essay is not a full-time essay. That's why um, he's not always available, but I was able to bring it back to Chanel and they have it now. So that's the update and also what happened to my bag. The rubbing occurred on the back side of the bag and it is on both side of where the chain comes out, but kind of more underneath. It's not on the surface. So from point of view of the outside of the bag, you couldn't see anything wrong with it. So unfortunately, I also experience some wear and tear uh, very prematurely. Uh, I'm not sure if it's normal or not. I don't feel like I got an affirmation or um, a confirmation from Chanel that it is a known defect or anything. In fact, the manager, I think what she told me is that it's not an issue and that they've not really had any issues with this bag so I felt like um, there was a bit of defensiveness uh, in any case the bag is right now in Chanel's hands right now because of this unfortunate situation it's sort of like put all of us in a very difficult spot you know like I'm a bit reluctant now for my essay it's probably awkward that they've had to deal with an issue and for me myself as a client who loves the brand um, I am disappointed but I still want the bag because I really truly love loved the style and how easy it was it was such a practical bag and I feel like if there was a defect I, that we should always let the brand have a chance to either fix it or to do something about it and so yeah we'll see what happens uh, I guess you guys will hear about it later on when I have an update, a further update for you guys. But as far as um, the 22 bag, do I still recommend it? I do. <laughs> I do, especially if there's no issues. Uh, of course, there's no way for us to know that. I do acknowledge uh, with some of you, uh, you know, saying that the design is a bit flawed because where the chain goes and kind of cinches and gets maybe most most of the pressure and friction um, should be reinforced. I think the bag itself is beautifully uh, <laughs> it's beautifully made in a way that it's so edgy and simple uh, and it's a Chanel obviously so we love it because we love it but um, maybe uh, maybe uh, either the coating has to be more consistent because it, why does it happen on one and not others? And then um, maybe they should add a material to reinforce that area. I don't know. Actually, I'm not the one making the bag. So I'm just making suggestions. From when I had it, from when I was using it, I still loved it. I loved how easy, practical, and good looking it was. I don't... I don't personally think that it looks like a garbage bag. I feel like that's just how the individual styles it. Again, you put on the right accessory, the right outfit, and your own confidence you will make anything work you can wear a garbage bag and still make it work so i think in terms of construction it is a bit simple but does it mean that it's not a great bag no it's still a great bag um does it have its flaws yes absolutely i don't believe that every single handbag is perfect there is pros and cons to every single bag not every bag will be ideal for everyone that is that is common sense i think and so yeah i think if you're on the fence 
and you're worried, maybe wait it out, see if um, more improvements and more development happens to this bag. But if you're just head over heels with the style and you're just someone who just wants to enjoy their bags, and especially if you already own the bag and you're not having any issues, oh my goodness, you're so lucky. Please continue to enjoy your bag and please uh, don't let social media and don't let all this noise deter you because fashion is about fun. Obviously, we are expecting a lot from these luxury brands, I know, because it's a lot of hard-earned money. I'm not disputing that. <laughs> I'm just saying that, you know, some of us are more unlucky than others. In conclusion, between the Gabrielle bag and the 22 bag, <laughs> um, which one should you choose? It's really so up to you. I feel like if you can't choose, then there is a reason for it. Maybe you're just not ready for either of them, right? Because there's pros and cons to this, there's pros and cons to that. And in the end, you you have to be fairly sure. I, I was really sure about this, and I was also really sure about the 22 in a sense that I was sure about the style, obviously. Uh, I wasn't really thinking of looking for defects. I never really think of looking for defects, obviously, because that's not something that you expect to find. Um, again, I'm I'm saying the word defect, but again, I don't know if Chanel has deemed that to be a defect yet. They do their own thing, whatever. Um, but it's just, um, yeah, between the two styles, they're so, so, so different. Uh, the Gabrielle definitely has its place in someone's collection who's pretty you know pretty varied they love their bags they love a variety but they just don't have anything like this because you know most of the other chanel bags are mostly flaps coco handles trendies they're all flop bags and they are not necessarily even like the most comfortable shoulder bags because most shoulder bags they have the one strap and then one strap can really dig you in if if the bag gets heavy, whereas this one, even when it gets heavy, it doesn't feel that because it distributes the weight quite nicely. Uh, obviously, unless you're wearing it like, I don't know, 15 hours af out of the day. Um, but that's not a normal scenario. So um, I would say the Gabrielle definitely has its place. I hope it doesn't get discontinued. I hope it stays in the rotation of of their seasonal bags at the very least and i absolutely recommend a small size and you can't go wrong with black obviously black is always great it will match with everything uh, but even if you went with lighter colors or like a seasonal color they're so pretty and they're nice uh just with lighter colors just be mindful of what you wear it's not just the gabrielle it's any bag actually as for the 22 Again, like I said earlier, I love the bag still. I definitely still want that bag in my collection because I actually I actually just really wanted a, a carefree, sort of lighter, uh, larger bag that is cool from Chanel on days that I just don't feel like downsizing. You know, just be able to fold up my jacket or f fold up a couple of little outfits for my nephews and nieces just to put it in instead of having a separate shopping bag. I, I find that very nice to use, um, but I don't necessarily need a big, big tote because I just want to just temporarily have extra things in my bags. And that was what the 22 bag was for me. So um, I, I totally wholeheartedly would recommend it in a sense um, but it's really up to you if you feel like you're not ready you're not someone who wants to risk any premature wear and tear that may or should not have happened so early uh, or even at all depending on whether it was a defective material or not uh, again we're all speculating at this point from a style's point of view you guys know where i stand i absolutely love it i mean i find the bag super flattering on me no matter what the outfit looks like so in terms of styling and even the, the feel of the bag like the actual material the chain the squishiness and the flatness of the design the large quilts the interior quilting um just the feel of the bag in general is just so it's just really nice. I really think that it was a job well done. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Um, like I said, these two bags <laughs> have had their share, fair share of 
drama, I think. This was definitely not a super well-loved bag, but from my own experience, it's an amazing bag. And the 22, well, the 22 is the 22. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Also, you can join my channel as a member where you get more exclusive content. We are having so much fun, me and Kat, during the Luxury Live show with all of our members where we discuss topics sometimes outside of even luxury. And it's so, so fun. It's so tight-knit. We just get each other anyway. <laughs> Have a great day or week ahead of you and I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye.